excuse the lining, I'm doing this because I'm just so excited I got this helmet, but I want to open it already. So, you probably already read the title of this video, but this is going to be the unboxing, just kind of first impressions of my new helmet, which is the, what is it, the Scorpion R1 Air Helmet. So, very excited about this. Nothing wrong with my current helmet, mind you. It's that uh, Bell MX-9 DLX Adventure MIPS helmet that I have been using for the past about year and a half, but it has a few problems. The helmet is a little bit heavier than this. Uh, it only has one visor, and it is not a pinlock visor, so it does have an issue of fogging. Uh, and the one other thing uh, with us now moving into the cooler when cooler season of riding, it you can't control the airflow. The air just flows no matter what. So I decided it was about time to upgrade. So this, ooh, move that out of the way. Scorpion E, sorry, Scorpion EXO. Uh, R1 air helmet. So let's go ahead and cut it open and see what it came with. Uh, obviously there are better, more professional reviewers out there than me. I don't review stuff. Um, I, I mean, I don't, I haven't even reached the point on YouTube where I even have enough subscribers to even be monetized. So take this whole entire review with a grain of salt, but this is just an honest, some guy who bought a helmet. I didn't even get a discount. Uh, I just bought it through Amazon, obviously, and it came out to the same price as everywhere else. Let's take a look. Oh, Ooh. all right then. So the helmet bag, actually, like, it feels fluffy. Like, it feels like this is packed, but reach inside, no. It is just that plush of a bag. There's a solid, like, a maybe millimeter or two of filling in between there. So I'll open that second. Let's see what this came with. Uh, the big thing that sold me on this was that it comes with two visors. Uh, you get a clear visor and a uh, dark smoke visor all in the bag. And the dark smoke came with its own bag. Bonus, I didn't know, know about this, but it came in black and yellow or black and gold. My favorite color scheme. Let's take a look at that visor. Be careful not to get my grubby fingerprints all over it. Ooh, nice. Nice clean visor. I am not going to take it all the way out of the bag because I don't even want to risk putting my fingers on it. Tuck that aside. I probably will not be using this for quite some time uh, just because we are moving into the darker season. I mean, it's only six o'clock, so we'll see. Uh, it comes with a pinlock insert, which is so nice. My very first helmet, uh, HJC CL17, had a pin lock visor. Never fogged, no matter what. So I love pin lock. I'm sad that my current helmet just doesn't have it. That's all that's in the box. A little piece of foam to keep the helmet from sliding around. Let's open up the bag and see how this looks. Let's see. They did a very nice job packaging this. I like this. This is very... Very secure, it's very tidy. Like, everything seems like it was done on purpose. That's nice to see. Let's open this up. Take a look at the helmet itself. Being careful not to get my fingers all over the visor because I do want to put the pin lock on there. Oh, let's see. So there she is right out of the box. Scorpion EXO R1 Air. Insert all of this. I mean, if you want to read the sticker, pause it. All right, I'm bored. So let's see, on the inside, I didn't realize it would say Scorpion on the bottom. It doesn't bother me. No one's going to be looking there, so that's fine. These are emergency release cheek pads. Those are nice. It's going to be nice to just have that in the event of the worst. Little uh, tech manual. Yeah. So anyways, why did I buy this particular helmet? Why not another Bell? Uh, I do like Bell helmets, but I bought this one for a few reasons. One, full control over the airflow. Okay, we have a peak visor, we have a mouth visor, and that's really about it. We have this one visor in the back that appears to just be always open. I'm not crazy about the spoiler on the back. I'm really not. But, uh, I'm not going to lie, at higher speeds, my helmet does tend to knock me around a little bit. And I hopefully this will knock me around a little bit less. Uh, I chose it because of the weight. This is quite noticeably lighter than my current helmet, despite being uh, the largest cell, shell, sh bleh, shell size available in this helmet. Uh, this, for me, I need an XL. 
And even if, and this is another big selling point, even if I end up outgrowing, ooh, how do I operate this? I don't want to bust it first day I have it. Uh, okay, good, just push up, cool. Uh, even if I do get to the point where I start to outgrow this or these pads start to weaken or uh, like uh, cave in as you do over time, especially with sweat, uh, there is, I'm gonna see if I can pull this down to show you, the, see that little red piece there? Right there? That is actually what inflates a couple of air pockets that are located underneath here behind these cheek pads. I'm not going to peel them off right now because I don't want to risk like messing with the face shield too much like I did just there. But yeah, what you do is you push that little red button and you just pump up those little air bladders that are located here and here and they squeeze in around your neck holding it secure. So even as this starts to break in, you're still going to have nice snug fitting cheek pads, which is extremely nice uh, and not something I took into consideration when buying either of my other helmets because the HJC, I just couldn't buy any cheek pads anymore. And likewise, the uh, MX-9, DLX, whatever, um, that one is also undergoing revision. So it's unlikely that in a year that I'll be able to continue to buy cheek pads for that. Uh, this guarantees that at the very least, hopefully, in the five or so years that I plan on using this helmet, that that won't be an issue. Uh, standard 2D rings, they do not feel like steel. They feel and sound like titanium. I think that's what it said on the website. Uh, nice and stretchy when you pull on this, so that way you can fit your head in without uh, cutting your ears off. I'm not going to pull the cheek pads out. I'll do that on another video when I go in to install my uh, Bluetooth unit and uh, wire in all of the microphone stuff that I need whenever I record for moto vlogs and whatnot. But yeah, we can see on the back, you know, DOT rated ECE. Uh, this is revision 22.05, not 22.06. That one had just come out, but uh, like, side note, like, I don't know exactly how true this really, really is, but apparently this is the same model helmet that, uh, I'm going to butcher his name, but Fabio Cordarara races with in MotoGP, but since his head is a size small, that's the only size that actually got sent to FIM for homologation. So, technically, this is not, East, this is not FIM rated. Also technically, supposedly, allegedly, the small size is uh, FIM certified, which if you don't know about FIM, basically, like, uh, that's the safest level helmet that you can possibly get for your head. But most of those helmets cost a bajillion dollars, uh, if not more. So yeah, I'm not going to peel this off right now. I'm not going to like put it on. I'm not going to give my first impressions. That's not what this is. This is just kind of me looking over the helmet as just a regular guy and seeing what I notice about it. Uh, the I'll notice compared to the bell, uh, the little liner that's down here at the top of your head where the top sits, that feels more cushiony than my bell as ditto for the back and the sides. As far as fitting in a comms unit, which I plan to do when I'm reaching back behind here. Oh, well, that just came right out. Uh, it looks like there is that much space for a comms unit. And let me reach my hand back there again. Oh, yeah, there's a huge cutout there for a comms unit. So fantastic. And if you don't want comms, I guess you can just wedge this guy right back in its place. Oh, yeah, that wedged right back in. Perfect. So, yeah, if you're not a comms person, just leave those in. If you are, you can just pull them out nice and easy. I mean, it feels super luxurious. It feels super nice. Uh, this neck roll, like the pads aren't here. The pads don't start until you see this seam right here. All of this, this is just a little bit of fabric there, I guess, to help seal out the air, which it would be nice because I keep riding around with earplugs because obviously I ride in a uh, adventure style helmet which is loud as hell. So I kind of need or would had really wanted something that hopefully this will be quiet enough that I won't want or really, really need earplugs. Uh, will I still ride with earplugs? I mean, on long trips, of course. Let's take a look at the visor because I haven't actually looked at that. 
And I know that's something some people are super concerned about with like how easy or hard it is to release. Looks like all you do is lift up on this lever. Looks like on both sides and the whole visor will just pop off. Again, I'm not going to do that today because I'm waiting until I go to install my pin lock. Uh, that will hopefully be in a separate video. Uh, but yeah, like so far, super impressed with the quality, super impressed with the weight. Uh, very much like how light it feels compared to my uh, bell. Like holding my bell with one hand, just with my thumb supporting it, would be incredibly painful. This one, while uncomfortable, it's not super painful. And you can see my arms. I'm not exactly the most muscular guy in the world. Uh, so yeah, feels nice. Looking at the paint job, like it's got this nice... Nice, like, a uh, sparkly finish on it, sparkly white. I got the gloss white because all of my helmets up to now have been dark colored, and in the summer, that sucks. So I want something white to help reflect the sun, not absorb it. Uh, that's just sort of something that's been on my to-do list to look for. Uh, the only thing that I'm not a humongous fan of, but I am kind of a fan of, just, like, it looks cool, but if it's not your thing, you'll hate it. The Scorpion logo is like it just a raised hard plastic bit that's on the front. There's no way to remove that as far as I know. Maybe there is. I don't know. I didn't really read that closely into the reviews. But yeah, I look forward to taking this apart, inserting all of my moto vlogging gear, riding around in it, like seeing how it handles, seeing how it performs. It's got a way more of an aggressive look than any of my current helmets do. So we will be seeing how all of that works. Can't wait. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, leave a thumbs up. Uh, dislike it, leave a thumbs down. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tell me what you want to know about this helmet. Or just leave a comment and ask stuff about the helmet. I'll tell you whatever I know, but I'll be perfectly honest with you. You are probably better suited uh, searching Scorpion EXO R1 Air Helmet into YouTube and looking for more professional uh, YouTubers' videos. Other people go way more in-depth. They take, apart, take it apart. They take apart these pads. They show you the innards. I'm not doing that in this video. So just keep all that in mind. And that's it for me. Have a good one. Okay, I lied. I'm going to show you one thing. It's how to install a pin lock visor. Basically, all I do is it's best to do it when you have the visor completely clean and brand new out of the box. That way you know it's as clean as it's ever going to get. Take it out, make sure there's none of that packaging stuff in the way. Then what I do is I brace one side of it. Make sure, Again, it helps to keep this little plastic bit on. That way, like, it doesn't matter what you do because that's not affecting the actual lens. It's behind the sticker. What I do is I hold it against the inside of my forearm, press this corner into my chest, and I pu pull it out this way, okay? Your visor can stretch nicely, and then you pull it, not all the way, like slowly until it's stretched as far as you feel comfortable, then you wedge the pin lock into the top and bottom pin locks, you make sure it's flat, there is a film right here protecting it, so you can push on that film to help get it in place. And then you can relax it and let it return to its normal shape. Okay? That's how it's going to be. And now I guess now, I mean, no sense in stopping the recording now. Let's go ahead, peel off the films, and see how clear a brand new visor can look. All right, it didn't sound amazing, but trust me when I say it felt incredibly satisfying to do that. Let's do that to the front now. Again, just going to be as careful as I can just to make sure that I don't mess any of this up. Oh, yes. Oh, so satisfying. So there we go. One pin lock visor. With all the fixings. So now I can just snap this in place, which I believe I just go on both sides. And then push. Yep. Nope, not quite. <laughs> Let's try that again. See, all the way up and push. Okay, felt a snap there. Push. Okay. 
Oh, I see. This little uh, track on the inside isn't all the way in. Suppose I have to lift this and then push it in. Right? Lift, then push. Ooh, this is stubborn. I don't know if the camera's going to pick all of this up, but we'll we'll try. So let's see. I'm going to lift this up. That seems to push that in as well. So let's go ahead and give this a go. Oh, wow. That does not want to go in. Oh, there we go. Just needed a little bit more muscle than I was giving it. Ooh, come on. I don't want to give it too much muscle. Last thing I want is to push on it the wrong way. There we go. Just have to push it a little bit that way, and then it'll seat into place. But there we go. All right, now that's the end of the video. Go away. Go away.